Yes. Ms. Baxter, could you please send in my first client of the day? Yes, I'm ready. Oh, that one. Okay, yes, send her in, send her in. Hello, Matilda. Lovely, lovely Matilda. Yes, please, please, have a seat. Have a seat. You are looking very lovely today. As a matter of fact, you're looking real good. Is that a new dress, Matilda? I think I want to. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had a Jim Morrison moment there. I apologize. I apologize. I'm sorry. Um, well, thank you for being understanding. I mean, after all, uh, as a succubus, I'm just going to be naturally attracted to you. And uh, in a bit of a lustful mood. Well, no, I understand you can't help but give off those pheromones. I mean, you are, after all, a succubus specifically created to seduce men, I understand. And I understand that you're not actually trying to seduce me, but uh, still, it's, uh, it's very hard. Um, Okay, moving on. Um, good news. I was able to find you work. Now, before you say no, just hear me out. I got you a sponsorship deal with Billings Condoms. No, 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 no. Hear me out. I already have an idea for the ad campaign. Basically, it's going to be you on camera flirting just the tiniest bit with the viewers at home. And what's going to happen is you're going to introduce yourself as a succubus and you're going to say something along the lines of, Hi, I'm a succubus, and I want your soul, but nothing else. That's why I prefer Billings condoms. That's right. You get what you want, I get what I need, and we don't make a mess. Seriously. I just want your soul. I want nothing else from you. And then we have an announcer's voice saying, Billings condoms. No need to make a mess. Or even better, Billings condoms. Pleasure without the mess. Now, how does that sound? Uh, sounds a little obscene and disgusting. Okay, well, we can definitely get that uh, promotion cleared through the censors. You seem a little surprised. Mm -hmm. Oh, I understand. Yes, the world has changed greatly since the 1800s. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Well, I understand that you lead a sheltered life, but believe me, nowadays a commercial like that is very mild compared to what's out there. No, I'm not kidding. Well, no, we can't show full frontal nudity, but honestly, um, remember that outfit you were wearing the very first time you came into this warehouse office of mine, 
Yeah, the uh, very low-cut one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can wear that in the commercial and the sensors will have no problem with it. Yes, really, I'm not joking. Oh, moral decay has really taken over most of the world, especially America. Yes. Now, we're not going to be able to run that commercial in any Muslim country, but we can definitely run it in America, most of Europe, uh, Asia. Uh, we can pretty much run it in every single country except the Middle East. Yes, it's gotten that bad. Yes. Yes. Where are that low-cut dress that I really like. I mean, I mean, uh, wear the low-cut dress that uh, most men like when you're not actively trying to seduce them. Yes. Well, the condom commercial pays a lot. Yes. Yes. Well, I know it's a stereotype, a modern-day succubus. You don't actually take men's souls. You you take their energy and you leave them exhausted and they fall asleep and that's perfectly fine, but no one wants to hear that, Matilda. No, no. They, they want the stereotypical soul-sucking succubus. Yes, yes. Well, I understand that does sound a bit sleazy, but that's what people want and I mean, in this day and age, everyone needs money, even a succubus. So what do you say? Can I tell them you're on board for the commercial? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Matilda, thank you. Oh, why is my office in a giant airplane hangar that's completely empty? Well. Uh, no offense, Matilda, but a lot of my supernatural clients are, well, they're about the size of a Boeing 747. Yeah, a lot of them are. You're, you're probably my smallest client. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, yes, you are small and adorable and very seductive. Yes, you have a great day, Matilda. Oh, yes. Oh, don't worry. This job pays a ton of money. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. That's wonderful. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ms. Baxter, please send in my next client. Mm -hmm. Ah, Lana. It is lovely to see you. Yes, I am staring at your tail. I can't help it. Well, you are a Lamia, after all. And that is a magnificent and gorgeous tail. Yes, yes. Oh, don't be that way, Lana. I know for a fact you like it when men compliment your tail. I mean, it is magnificent. Oh, especially the way it glistens in the sun. Yes. I'm not going to lie. I would like to be wrapped up in your coils, but let's keep things professional. Uh, good work on my part. I was able to find you a sponsor. That's right. Well, no, no. Lana, Lana, would I do that to you? Would I do that to you? No, 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 no. You are not going to be advertising any sort of snakeskin products. No, absolutely not. I would never do that to you mostly because it would tick you off and you could break me in half if you lashed out at me with your tail. So no, no, 
No snakeskin products, no snakeskin anything. No zoos, no zoos whatsoever. But remember we talked about that rescue sanctuary for reptiles and snakes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want you to at least reconsider. I know you said no, but it's a very worthwhile charity. Please reconsider. They're trying to save reptiles and snakes. I get it. You're not a snake. You're a lamia. There is a difference. I acknowledge that fact. I appreciate you. You know I do. I know how intelligent you are. You're not just a gorgeous body with a magnificent snakeskin tail attached to it. I mean, snake-like tail. You know I didn't mean anything by that. Come on, Lana. You are gorgeous. Would you please reconsider the charity commercials? They're willing to pay. All right. All right. I knew I could count on you. You're a trooper. Okay. But I have more work for you. Now, just hear me out. It's not a zoo. It's nothing to do with snake skin. There's a company that came out with a brand new type of comforter. It's big. It's so comfortable. Yes, they sent me one of their comforters, and I've been using it. It's heavier than a normal comforter, but it's so soft, and it just feels like I'm being massaged whenever I'm wrapped up in it. I think you know where I'm going with this. That's right. They want you for their advertising campaign to say that their comforter is as comfortable as your coils when you wrap them around people. Well, yes, I know, I know, men, men, but we're trying to downplay the fact that when a Lamia wraps herself around a human being, it's an act of intimacy in your culture a big one. We want to downplay that. We want to make it seem as though it's just something that's done to give warmth and comfort and not really an act of intimacy. Why not? Because it's going to sell more comforters, it'll lead to more ad campaigns, and it'll lead to more money. That's why not. So please, Lana, for my sake, downplay the fact that it's an act of intimacy. Downplay it completely. Just make it seem as though it's a warm, comforting thing that Lamias do for all human beings, not just men, because I get it. There is no such thing as male Lamias. You're all female and... All of you love men. I get it. Let's downplay that. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Oh, and when you speak with them, the meeting is going to be outside. Try not to raise yourself up to your full height. Remember, the taller you are next to a human being, the more intimidating you are even though you're not trying to be. So, for my sake, please, um, make yourself look a little shorter by slouching down. Well, they're not going to be able to tell, because most of the slouching will be from your tail.
Yes, I know, it's a weird psychological thing with human beings. Trust me on this. One time, I bought platform shoes. I wore them in front of Ms. Baxter. I ended up being taller than her. Normally, we're the same height. She came into my office to talk to me, realized I was several inches taller, and said, oh, I don't like this. So in order to not lose my secretary, I got rid of the platforms. Yep. Well, you know I'm a short man, but that's besides the point. And... Well, I'm not going to lie to you, Lana. I try to stay professional, but I would not mind being wrapped up in your gorgeous coils. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that later. All right. Thanks. You have a good one. Ms. Baxter, send in my next client. Oh, that one. Okay, send him in. Send him in. Olaf, how are you, my friend? Uh, I would offer you a seat, but as you can see, the chair is just too small for you. I apologize for the oversight. Olaf, I understand why you're upset. Yes, I get it. You are a cyclops, and you are actually shorter than the average cyclops, but you're still ten and a half feet tall. Olaf, Olaf, please, please, we're getting off on the wrong foot. Now I know, you and I both know, that as a cyclops you are an extremely intelligent, educated creature. You know this, I know this, your kind knows this. Human beings don't. I mean, I'm sorry. But human beings think ogres are ugly and stupid. And, I mean, the fact that you have a clear membrane that goes over your eye instead of an eyelid makes it look as though you're much scarier because you never blink. Well, I realize that the membrane behaves the same way as an eyelid, but it's perfectly clear. And yes, it does offer protection to your eye much more than a human eyelid does for us. But I mean, look, Olaf, the name of the game is money. Human beings, in general, think of a cyclops as being ugly and stupid. So, we are going to promote you as a barbarian in the next commercial. Yes, I know, I know. But you're going to promote psych... Olaf, please, please, stop shouting. Now, as I was saying, you are going to promote Cyclops brand motor oil. And you're going to do it by wearing a loincloth made out of fur boots made out of fur, holding a large wooden club, and we'll get you some hair extensions. And I'm sorry, but you're going to have to speak like a simpleton. Well, Olaf, I know that you have a 200 IQ, and that 100 is average. But Olaf, I mean, they are willing to pay a massive amount of money. I know, I know, you're promoting an ugly 
disgusting stereotype. But Olaf, I know for a fact that you need the money. And let's face it, work for a Cyclops is not that easy to come by, my friend. I mean, think about it. Most of the supernatural creatures who are my clients, they're women and they're gorgeous. I mean, yes, they are supernatural creatures. Matilda has horns, black reptile wings, and a tail. And that tail of hers seems to have a mind of its own. And speaking of tails, you've seen Lana. You've seen her. I mean, she is a freaking 11 on a scale of 1 to 10. And that tail of hers, I mean, come on. And my other clients, getting them work is easy. Getting you work is difficult. Now, I know you need the money. I got you the work. Are you willing to take the job? All right. That's what I like to hear. Yes, I know you have a family to take care of. You're doing the right thing for your family. All right. Yes. Ms. Baxter will give you the address of where to go. And they'll have you in the right outfit. We'll just take care of this. It'll be a day's work. You'll get paid. Everything will be okay. All right, I'll see you soon.